Hey guys, welcome back to this month's Scoop. Uh, here for the month of May, I'm Gabriel Lewitt, CEO of SGL Financial. And in this month's Scoop, we're going to teach you a little bit about Social Security timing. So for many of you that are out there, you're thinking about taking Social Security. Perhaps you're on the cusp of retiring soon. Uh, maybe you've already retired, but you're waiting on that benefit. Uh, there's a lot of different scenarios where Social Security planning can come into place. And the key question behind Social Security planning is, when should I take my benefit? So that's what we're going to talk about here today. And you might think it's simple and straightforward. And here's the reason for that is everywhere you go in the news, you commonly hear some regurg what I call regurgitated advice, which is always delay taking your Social Security benefit. You hear it all the time. You hear it from Susie Orman. You hear it from Ramsey. You hear it from all the talking heads. You hear it from the news people. And they're all just kind of feeding on one, of an one another because that's the general consensus advice that's out there. But the question is, is that really the best move for you? And the answer might surprise you. So we're going to dive into that here with our scoop. Uh, and we're going to go through some graphs and some numbers and some data. And hopefully that'll help you understand the true ramifications around your timing decision. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in. On the board behind me here, I've already pre-drawn a baseline graph for us to understand Social Security timing and what it really means at a core level. So first thing first here, when you are looking to take your benefits, you've got to know a key number called your full retirement age, or FRA, okay? And that's going to be the age at which, and in this example I'm using 67, uh, you will get 100% of the benefit listed on your statement at full retirement age. And if you were born in or after 1960, that full retirement age will be uh, 67, okay? On the other hand, if you were born between 1943 and 1954, your full retirement age would have been 66. You'll notice that there is a gap here. There's just monthly increments, okay? 66 in two months, 66 in four months. You'll get the idea here if you were born between 54 and 60. Uh, many of our clients these days are generally right around that mid 66 to 67 range. But for simplicity for our video here, I'm gonna use the 67 age for full retirement. Okay, so on the graph, you're gonna see a couple of different ages here, right? At 67, full retirement age, as we mentioned, you'll get 100% of your stated benefit on your Social Security statement. And by the way, if you don't know your benefit amount that's projected yet, make sure you sign up on the Social Security website. Go in there, plug in all your information. It takes five minutes, and then you'll be able to see exactly what your projected benefit amounts are scheduled to be, which is very, very important. Okay, the next thing is, is as you get less and less here in age in taking an earlier Social Security benefit, you'll notice a reduction. You may not be able to see it too well on the video, uh, but if you take it at 66, your benefit's reduced by 6.7%. If you take at 65, it's reduced by 14.3%. At 64, it's reduced by 20%. At 63, it's reduced by 25%. And if you take it early at 62, it's reduced by 30%. Okay, so you're thinking here, well, that's definitely a pretty big reduction. Maybe that's an advantage for waiting. We're going to talk about that. On the other hand, if you wait till after 67, after your full retirement age, you get an 8% bump for each additional year that you wait. And so the common knowledge or talking point says, wow, if I can get an extra 8% bump by waiting for that year, I should definitely wait at all costs. But that's not going to be the case, and we're going to see that. So this is our very first important building block here, guys, understanding that reduction if you take your benefit early and understanding that gain if you take it later. So once you have this data, the next thing to keep in mind is you can calculate what they call a break-even. <clears throat> okay, so let's draw this. Give me just a minute here. Here's what happens, right? So if I plot this on a graph, I'm going to see some interesting things. Okay, first I'm going to say, what if I take 62 here? I've got 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70. You guys get the gist, right? So if I start taking it at 62, obviously I'm going to see my benefit starting to go up. And actually, I'm going to redo my numbers here because I just realized I'm going to run out of space. <laughs> All right, sorry. Not perfect on the live videos here, but okay. So here, let's say this is 66. 67, 70, it's not going to be to scale here, but you'll get the idea. So at 62, you're going to see our line going straight up here because we started taking our benefit as soon as we possibly could. If I wait till 67, I'm going to get a higher amount, right? Because here I'm getting a reduction, okay, of 25%. 
uh, 30 percent. Okay, uh, here I'm going to get a uh, my 100 percent amount, right? And so I'm going to start getting a higher amount, but it's going to take me a while for that to break even over starting at 62. Okay, you with me? So here I, I'm not getting any income, but when I do start getting income from Social Security benefits, it's going to be higher. That's going to give us a break even point. And lastly, if I start at 70, the same thing happens. I'm going to get an even higher benefit amount, which is going to give me a steeper curve, okay? And I'm going to have, a, yet again, a break-even point somewhere here along the way. Now, when you go and run the numbers, this happens somewhere between 81 and 83, typically, depending on the exact ages that you're using here. So, when you just look at it in a vacuum here, this doesn't sound too bad, right? If you're going to live beyond 81 to 83, uh, it might be a good idea to take the money later at age 70, perhaps, than it would be at 67 or 62. Now, if you're following me so far, this seems straightforward, but there, we're missing a very key component. This is the part that I think you never uh, have heard before or likely to be, um, you know, new information for you. Okay, so let's phrase it this way, guys. So we understand the break-even analysis now. What happens if we... Take our Social Security, okay, here's 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. All right, let's use this example. Well, if I take Social Security at 62, let's just say it's 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, okay, 20,000, and then at 67, it's 20,000, right? I'm going to keep this simple, no cost of living adjustments or things like that. Well, if I started taking it at 67, I haven't even crunched the number here. Let's just say it's, uh, you know, it's 26,000, okay? Well, either way we look at it here, this is the point. Over this five-year period, I've had to take, for if I'm going to retire at the same point here, $100,000, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, times 20,000 for those five years I've delayed, and this has to come from my other investments, okay? For simplicity, it doesn't matter where it comes from, it just got to come from your other investments. Otherwise, where are you getting this income from? It's not coming from Social Security, so it's got to come from your other investments to meet your income needs. All right, and here's the key point. So this is going to create something called an opportunity cost. If I take $100,000 out of my investments, they can no longer grow. Let's say they were going to grow at 7%, okay? They can no longer do that because I've used them to fund my income over here. And so that's the missing piece. When you factor in this opportunity cost for Social Security, it actually will push this break-even point back quite significantly because $100,000, let's say you're earning 7%, that'll double approximately every 10 years. So you're losing out over the next 20, 30 years of your retirement on $200,000, $300,000 of lost opportunity earnings, okay, by using this $100,000 earlier. So we've got to recover that as well when we look at our break-even analysis for Social Security. So here's what this looks like, guys. This is the final piece, okay? When we plot this all on the graph, okay, if I look at my assets, okay, I have an asset picture. Let's just say it starts, my assets grow like this, okay, and I'm taking Social Security right here at age 62. Well, if I have to take it at 67, instead, I've got to dip into my assets, right, until my higher Social Security starts, and then I'm going to start to recover from there, okay, and eventually this pushes that break even oftentimes out to age 90 plus, okay, because here's all the extra money that I've had to withdraw from my assets to cover the delay in Social Security to a later benefit starting point, okay, so this is really, really important. This is your opportunity cost. And that's going to add up to be quite a bit of money, okay, in the future until a much, much farther point than traditional uh, thinking and talking heads will tell you. Okay, so that's the scoop, guys. And what I want to share with you, just some takeaways, right? Does that mean you should always take it early at 62? No, not necessarily. There's some different moving parts. Uh, depends on you, your goals, your spouse. Uh, are you significantly older than your spouse? Who's the primary income earner? There's a lot of different variables that go into taking Social Security and the ideal timing behind that. That's something that we can help you with for sure. But the key thing to take away here is don't take the stock logic you hear all over the news and the media that you should always delay. Many times, more often than not, 
uh, it's actually not going to be in your favor and you might want to start thinking about taking that Social Security earlier versus later as a result. So I know that was a lot in the short session. If you've got questions on it, give us a call. 847-499-3330 is our line. You can go to sglfinancial.com and ask us, of course, any questions. Uh, we can help answer it one-on-one -on, -one on a 15-minute uh, get-together if you have any questions. Uh, or you can type in your questions and we can go to our podcast and answer them on the show, whatever. You know, we want to make sure we get you the information that you're looking for. Uh, so I hope that made sense. I hope it was uh, a little bit of new information for you. And uh, thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you on the next scoop.